This episode is my heartbeat. My guests are four gifted African girls. I have Kasande, who is from Zambia. She's 18 years old, academically totally gifted, and she's truly impacting her community with so much of her STEM awareness. And next door from Togo, I have Makafui, who is 18. She used to be a street hawker. And now she's the top science girl in her country. Semyat is only 14 and she's from Nigeria and she's easily described as a mini Einstein. She wrote her wasi at the age of 13, currently studying with her A-levels. And finally, right from home Ghana, I've got Jasmine, 16 years old. She wrote her wasi and attained eight A's. Jasmine, how did you do that? Eight A's. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. I'd say my journey to getting 8 A's began when I wrote my VC in Form 2 with, and went to Achimota Senior High School with my brother. So knowing that I was writing my VC in Form 2, it was very planned out. I was very analytical about what I wanted to achieve. So I assessed myself before going to Senior High School, knew some of the traits that I had and some of the traits that I had to do away with because I wasn't very satisfied with my grades in VC. So wait, hang on a second. Let's go back to your BEC. What grades were you getting? Well, I got aggregate nine. Aha. Uh -huh. So I, you wanted to move it up from there. Yes, because I knew I hadn't utilized my full potential. I could do more than that. So yes, I, I, I was focused from right from form one. I started preparing because I knew that I had the prize in mind. I knew what I wanted to achieve at the end of the day. And I, I, I loved my subject. I needed to be able to achieve it. I had to do something that I loved. And I loved science. I loved my physics, chemistry, So you were biology, doing physics, chemistry, chem biology, and biology, elective mathematics. Elective mathematics. What else? And then the core subjects, core mathematics. Core mathematics. Integrated science. Integrated science. English language. English language. And social studies. Hey, Razi. <laughs> Eight A's. That is really powerful. Okay. Cassandra, you're coming from, I would say, because the rest of us are, you know, fairly close, you're mm -hmm. coming from Zambia. Yeah. What was life like for you, home in Zambia? Okay, so in Zambia, when you write your, we write our senior high school, we do uh, all levels. Mm -hmm. A level is not part of the curriculum. So I, I didn't, I wanted to push myself further. My mom asked me to apply to a school in my country but i wanted to try out new things so with the syllabus in zambia it's not easy for me to get an education outside my country so after i wrote my o levels i decided to write to go to apply for a levels and so i found myself at the african science academy yes. was it scary moving away from zambia moving away from a home going to a new country ghana yes it was sort of scary but I loved to explore, so I was down for it. It was a bit scary knowing that I'm moving all the way from Southern Africa and I did not know anyone in Ghana. And it was a bit scary, but I was up for the challenge. You were up for the challenge. That's my girl. Akafo, you come from Togo, yes. right? And you have had an interesting beginning. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your life as a street hawker and then describe what brought you into this particular space. Um, my name is Makafi, as you said, and um, I've always been aware of my family's financial weakness. So um, I've always worked hard to support them. So I can remember my dad got sick at some point and then he had a surgery. So and we, my siblings and I, we dropped out for out of school. So I needed to work in order mm -hmm. to send, to go back to school and then help my mother to send my other siblings to school. So I started, I heard before about street, work, street workers, so I started like a street seller. So I was selling tissues, mm -hmm. uh, some other gadgets, like every day, and I could like see the outcome myself, and then I continue. And it paid off, like uh, at the end, I was able to go back to school and my other siblings also. And from that particular experience, like I was able to stand on my own like selling as a street seller, um, I had to negotiate with people. I had to talk to them, like to get their point of view on what I'm selling and then convince them that what they'll get from me is good before I can um, get what I'm looking for. So from, from that experience, so, so I was ready to achieve, like I was ready for any obstacle that will be on my way. 
So going to high school, I I was I, I was admitted to a scientific school. Mm -hmm. So I needed to work hard before I can find my place there. So as um, I wanted to achieve higher than my family because my family, my, my, my parents, they didn't graduate. So it was kind of something I wanted to go beyond what they've done. So I was prepared to challenge myself in order to achieve what I wanted to achieve. The first objective wasn't like being the best science girl of my country. It was just to get the highest grade possible. That is very good. But at the end, I ended up being the best science girl of my country. How did you combine street hawking, selling, and school? Tell me, how did you do it? Actually, um, I wasn't combining them. The two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when I started, I wasn't able to go to school. So you were not in school at all when you were selling? Yes. So you stopped going to school? Yes. And then you were selling? Yes, because I needed that money to pay my fees. Mm -hmm. Now, after I was able to like amass some income to go back to school, I started selling again. But now, every holiday, like on holidays, so that I won't face that challenge again. So, anytime I'm in vacations or have Christmas holiday, I go back to sell because I think um, it's helpful for my family. Thank you, Makapu. Samiat. You're from not far away, Nigeria. Yeah. But you are the youngest yeah. of the group now. You don't even feel like the youngest. You no. all are doing so well for yourselves individually. But you coming from Nigeria, describe what being home was like and then having to make a decision at a very young age to move to Ghana to study. Okay. Um, when I was coming to Ghana, I... This, I made the decision to come because I knew I was going to, what I was coming for, it was a really good opportunity. And being home was really fun. I, I didn't want to leave home. And with my, with my age, my parents, at first, they were not supportive of the decision of leaving their daughter to study elsewhere. Um, where they didn't even know anybody or they didn't have any relative. So being home, I would say, is really something. Um, I'm here in Ghana and I still think about home. Yeah. Like, I really want to go back home, but I still have to study because I know what I'm here for is very important. And... With, um, with my decision of coming to Ghana, I, after completing my WASI at the age of 13, I, on a normal day, I had to go to a university in Nigeria, yeah. just to write um, JAMB, the exam I write before mm -hmm. um, entering a university, and just go and live a normal life like everyone else. But I knew I had something in me that I wanted to challenge myself to do better and I heard of ASC, I heard about ASC and oh, STEM, what is STEM, like STEM. So that was the first time hearing about STEM. So I decided to go in for it because I didn't really know what it was, mm -hmm. but I knew it's something interesting. When you were writing your WASI at 13, yeah. were there people talking about it saying, you know what, this yeah. little girl is writing? And how did you feel? I mean, 13. Um, it wasn't my WASI that I wrote at an mm -hmm. early age. I wrote my BC when I was 11. So you even wrote the BC even earlier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started, I actually started my GH, um, junior high school when I was eight years old. <laughs> and and how old were your mates? Around how old? They were around 10, 10 to 12. 12 yeah. And you were eight. Yeah. So you were a little, this tiny person in yeah. the class. Yeah. Eight. When the teacher asked a question, yes, me, 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 I can answer. Yeah. So like then, they were they discriminated against me. How? Like I was the youngest, they would be like, Oh, why are you in this class? You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be like you're still supposed to be in the primary classes. So but I at some point like I felt like, oh, am I really supposed to be here? Because it was getting too much, but I didn't let that discourage me and I worked hard and the first exam I wrote, I was the first student. I oh. came out as the first student out of over 50 
in my class. So that that really made them like acknowledge me and it yeah. made me worthy of being in the class. Yeah. I want to clap for all, all four of you. And I think that when you are young, you know, and you almost have no clue what the real world has to offer, you get lost in that. Do you guys ever ever get lost? You know, do you ever mm. get lost in the world? Like, you know, where am I headed? What am I doing? Mm. Do, you, do you feel like that sometimes, Jasmine? Do you feel like that sometimes? Yes. So, like, even for coming to African Science Academy, I was, I'm coming here because I know that I want to pursue something related to STEM. Mm -hmm. But before that, after writing my YC, I would have gone in for something like medicine and all of that. So changing, like, I knew I would have gone for that, but that was not really what I wanted. So coming here, sometimes when you feel like you are doing something very different, you feel a bit confused, like people are going this way and then you are doing something different. You're like, am I actually doing the right thing? Should I have just gone for what was there Just already? the traditional thing. Yes. Yeah. That, that, those are some of the feelings that you get. But once you know where you are coming from, what, what your initial aim was and where you want to get to, you are able to overcome that and continue. Um, um, Kasande, do you, do you ever stop and say, okay, what is my life plan? Do, do you do that? And if you do, what is it? Okay. So I do actually stop and think, what is my life plan? Um, I, I really, I'm really passionate about change. It's the main reason why I started my project that I started. Tell me about your project first of all. Okay. I started a project called Youth for STEM. Youth for STEM. Yes, Youth for STEM. When I was 17, that was during my gap year. After I wrote my O-Levels, I was 16, and I had to take a gap year before going for my A-Level. Yeah, at 17, I visited a number of schools in my community and spoke to over 160 students about STEM and some of the problems they could solve using STEM. And when I came to the African Science Academy, I had the opportunity to apply for a grant and I actually won a grant of a thousand pounds to facilitate my project. Mm. Yes. So I, I had it all planned out. My plan was to build a STEM consultation center at the end of my undergraduate studies. But when I went to the African Science Academy, I actually got the opportunity to do it before going to university. So I think my plans have already started working out and I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm, I'm looking forward to launching my STEM consultation center at the end of this, at the end of my stay at ASA. How it, old would you be? I will be 18. I'm oh already 18 now. Yes. What was I doing when I was 18, guys? <laughs> I was now trying to figure out, okay, what next? And you have already planned it out. Yeah. So at the end of your studies at ASA, you know exactly what you're doing. Yes. Can I borrow some of your brain? <laughs> so Makafui, you, when you look at where you're coming from and when you look at how now the continent celebrates you as being the top girl in science from your country, how does it make you feel about the journey you have had to go through? Especially maybe those moments when you felt you know, street hawking is really hard. Now I have to study, it's really hard. How does it make you feel about those moments? Mm, when I look back, I think, I feel like I've done what was right to do. Because I can remember that when I was telling some people, like me come, like some other students, they would come and some some of them ended up not going back to school. And, but me, I did persevere and then I went back to school. So for me, I feel like um, I'm resilient. Like I'm ready to challenge or I'm ready to go through every um, difficulty because I want to get somewhere. I want to get, I, had, I have an objective that I'm ready I can't like sleep or I can't wait or I have to achieve it before I can rest. What's your objective? Me? Um, actually, I want to be the most celebrated female of my country because in my country, women, we have women, but 
it's like we don't really have those we have to look up. Okay. For example, uh, last year, uh, we were supposed, um, our country should send like an ambassador to Ethiopia to represent our country. But because um, girl, the, uh, the female, or let me say the student, the female student at that time were not able to produce an effective result, we were not able to send a girl to that um, country. Wow. So me looking at that, it's like we are, uh, it's not we are underestimated, but it's like our work is not talking about us. So I need to start that. If no one is starting that, I need to start that so that my, like my peers or the, the younger ones mm -hmm. can look at me and then do well. So. But they, they are, do you feel that they're looking up to you now? Yes. Because last time I was talking to my former English teacher and then he wants to invite me for a conference, like girls, to talk to girls about STEM, to share with them my story. So I think I've made an impact in that community so that now they want to follow up to hear from me is a great thing, I think. That. It's completely admirable. So Samir, you tell me, now that you've discovered STEM and you've fallen in love with it, what is it about STEM excites you? What is it about it that really makes you feel like, yes, I made the right decision? Okay, um, first, I'll, <clears throat> firstly, I, I really love mathematics. And since STEM um, deals, involves math as well, so I find, I find STEM really challenging and I find it fun. It's challenging the and challenge it's fun. is fun. Yeah, the challenge is fun. So I would say this is what really excites me about STEM because it makes me think and like think through ideas, challenge other ideas as well. And there was a time when we we're having um, a physics class and um, our teacher was like, oh, this is an assumption, um, this, this, this. So like, we're just like, why, why, like, why are there assumptions? Like these things are not real, but why are we studying them? And the response we got was that even though there are assumptions, we still need to study them. So like, I'm looking forward to, to discover things and I hope to become a computer engineer in the future. So I'm having a conversation with four brilliant, brilliant young ladies, Jasmine, Kasande, Makafui, and Semyat, and they are teaching me about resilience. Isn't that the most powerful thing? We'll be right back talking to these four wonderful ladies after the break. You're welcome to the world of Anita Erskine Network, and we've got so much to share with you. So go online at www.anitaerskinenetwork.com and find out more. When my producers and I wanted to kind of put the spotlight on young girls, give an opportunity for the next generation of women to speak on the show, we immediately looked towards the African Science Academy, not just because they are my friends, but also because I'm in awe of what they're doing with Africa's young women, particularly in the space of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And I've got four of them here. I've got Jasmine, Kasande, Makafui, and Semyat. And you know what? Before the show, they said, we don't know if you'll remember our names. Well, girls, I do remember your names. Um, so let's take it to Kasande first, and then I'll bring it to other, the, the, you know, the rest of you. But when you talk about, or when the world says, oh, STEM is the next, you know, generation is the next thing, for somebody who is deep in it, what does it mean for you, Kasande? Okay. So um, learning about the fourth industrial revolution, I realized that technology is... I don't want to use the term taking over the world, but it's sort of the big thing. And if Africa is going to develop, we need people who are going to be inclined in STEM and technology. Mm -hmm. And there are many things that are becoming very digital. Yes. So if digital, if 
um, if technology is sort of the big thing, it means the development of Africa is partially dependent on STEM. And that's how come I think STEM is really important. And that's the basis of my project. Yeah. Yes. Bringing awareness to everyone concerning STEM and the importance of STEM. Jasmine, do you think that there is an appreciation um, in Ghana or in Africa? Do you think there's an appreciation for how important it is for girls to be encouraged to pursue careers in STEM? Do you think we understand how important it is? Um, yes, I think we do, but I, I think it's not enough. Mm. Like, we do, but not enough. Because, yes, there have been many places that I have visited with STEM woman projects where people are, um, girls are being empowered to take on STEM careers. But how many girls is this, girls are these um, projects mm -hmm. impacting? There mm -hmm. are girls all around the country who still have moved, are forced into early marriages and all yes. sorts of things. Mm -hmm. They are not exposed to this kind of projects that even mm -hmm. I have been exposed to as um, having this privilege to be here. So. I feel like we do appreciate it, but it's it's not enough. It's not getting to a point where it can, um, it can really can make people move. Yes, yeah. there's still more that needs to be done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's it's very powerful that you state that because I guess sometimes we also just start having a conversation, but we forget the people who will really benefit from the conversation. Yes. And it's not just us; it's also hundreds of millions of people out there. So what you're saying is we need to be able to take the conversation you know, yeah. out there. Yes. Makafi, how is it like, is it for you, um, when you when you look at the girls in your community, like, even if we take it back home to Togo, how is it for you? Do they understand that they can make it in STEM? Mm. In my community, I think, I would say they know they are able to do things, but they consider themselves as just, they are just there to help men, not because they, they have the potential to do things. Because I've, in my former school, um, I worked with people like girls, and when it comes to tests, for example, they're like, why should I learn? I already know like the person who's going to get the, the top mark, like, and they would, they, uh, she was maybe like talk about a, a boy or something like that. So I think they don't understand like, their potential is like from we know that physically men are stronger mm. than mm. women but it's like they also bring it to like um potential they also bring it to abilities and it's what me i tried to make them understand but for the time i spent there i always like i always brought my my peers to me to tell them about like if me i'm able to do it, it means yeah. that it's possible for them to uh, we even like went for a mathematics challenge and i was the only participant like i was the only one that accepted to participate you mean you're the only female yes or, or the mm. only girl that accepted to participate in and it wasn't really uh, like it doesn't like encourage you but you know that you need to make them understand it. So it's, it's kind of your job or your responsibility to do that because if you don't do it, who will do it? Yeah. So once you are thriving in it, once you are successful in it, then you become an example yes. for your peers, for your, your, your female peers to also take on. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel saddened by the fact that they need to understand that they have potential, but they don't? Does, does that bother you? I'll, okay, mm, sometimes and sometimes mm, no. Because I think we all need help sometimes. Yeah. Because me too, I was having, when I was born or when I was young, mm -hmm. um, I was having challenges. Maybe I did not understand mm. what I could do. Me, me too, I was thinking like that, but someone made me understand it. And it's now up to me to make people understand it. So I think it's a joy or a happiness to talk about, like to share my experience and then help people understand what I'm thinking and what is right or what is good, like what is exciting now. 
Samiat, what about you? I mean, when you think about, you know, the girls you've left back home, do you feel a responsibility to one day be able to go back to teach them why or how they can also be part of the STEM, I call it the STEM movement, the STEM revolution? Do, do, do you feel that degree of responsibility to be a spokesperson for STEM back home? I would really like to introduce, um, tell them more about STEM. And before doing this, because I can't just tell them about something I don't really know much about. So that's why I'm empowering myself to empower girls in my community as well. When you girls are described as gifted, yeah, and you're wearing the beautiful t-shirts, African Gifted Foundation Ghana, when you are described as gifted, for you personally, I mean, the rest of us kind of sit outside and listen to you ladies and, oh, wow, they're so amazing. But to you as individuals, the word gifted that, you know, and the crown of being gifted that we are more or less like placing on you, what does it mean for you? Yes, Samia. Okay, um, for me, I would like to say um, the word gifted, it makes me feel like I've done something that people are praising me for. And it also makes me feel there is, there is more to do. Like, I still have a lot to do. And gifted doesn't, it does, to me, it doesn't really mean, oh, gifted that you should be, I don't know, that you should be carrying it everywhere, that I'm yeah. gifted, I'm this, I'm that. But what you do shows if you are gifted or not, yeah. McCaffrey? Me? Being gifted doesn't mean, for me, it doesn't mean like being smarter than the rest. It just means being ready to exploit fully my abilities, my potential. So when I see that word that is attached to me, I kind of like, I have, is like a standard. I have yeah. to live according mm -hmm. to that standard and even go beyond that standard. So being gifted for me is 